Now I know what you're thinking, mainly because you won't shut up about it in the comments. Where's the Le Mans comedy review? Well, in truth, endurance racing has never been a huge interest of mine. I just don't know enough about it in order to make a video like that. You're probably wondering then, why am I looking at the driver market instead? Because clearly I know bugger all about that too. Hey there guys, I'm Will. Welcome to FP1 and today, I want to talk about Mick Schumacher. The German was recently credited for the Mercedes double podium in Barcelona, mainly because he wasn't there to do the Schumacher splits, bringing out a red flag and helping out Red Bull. Jokes aside, Mick allegedly spent nine hours in the simulator on Friday night before flying to the track the following morning to assist the team in what has become their best Grand Prix so far this year, and as such has raised the German's name in conversation surrounding the 2024 driver market. But is this really going to happen? Well, for my visually impaired viewers that can't read the title of this video, I don't think it will. Allow me to explain. Now I've covered Mick's junior career many a time in the past, so let's just refresh ourselves with his Formula 1 stint for now. Mick joined Haas in 2021, partnering Mr. Touchy here. At the start of the season, the team admitted that they hadn't really bothered and had instead thrown all their eggs into the 2022 basket. A positive sign then. As predicted, the car was trash, but Mick did outperform Mazza spin here. Not that that's much of an achievement looking back on it. The 2022 car was better, with Haas sending Nikita on his merry way to the front lines and replacing him with Kevin Magnussen. Smasher of doors. Despite missing preseason, the Dane was immediately on the pace, and more importantly, outperforming Schumacher. With Mick's true pace now seemingly exposed, he began to split opinion, as well as his Haas. These crashes really didn't help, and realistically, by the summer break, the writing was on the wall for Schumacher. His exit wasn't officially confirmed until after the Brazilian Grand Prix, Haas choosing to reunite Magnussen with his bullsack buddy Nico Hülkenberg for 2023. By that stage in the season, most of the grid had already been confirmed. The only spot left was at Williams, which was being kept warm for Logan Sargent, provided he didn't bin it in the wall in the final F2 round. Schumacher appeared in the running for that seat where that ought to fall through, though unfortunately Logan waited till after he had the drive to start wedging himself in the tyre barriers. All that was left for Mick was to try and secure a reserve drive somewhere higher up the grid for 2023, eventually settling with the Silver Arrows. The Schumacher name wasn't unfamiliar to the Brackley-based team, Mick's father Michael racing for Mercedes after their takeover of Braun in 2010. The move for his son was the best option if he wanted to secure any chance for racing in 2024 or beyond. Just take a look at Mercedes' previous reserve drivers, for example. Esteban Ocon took over the role after being sent packing by the Force India team at the end of 2018. He ended up coming incredibly close to replacing Valtteri Bottas at Mercedes for 2020, before settling for a Renault drive when that all fell through. More recently, you have Nick DeVries, who despite moving to Alpha Tauri in the Red Bull fold for this season, still helps out his old team by driving Helmut Marco one step closer to a stroke. So with that successful track record and the strong praise in the role this year, why can't I see Schumacher returning for 2024? Well, if we look at the options that are out there, the situation becomes fairly obvious. Firstly, the top teams, Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes, and hey, might as well lump Aston in here now as well. Regardless, it's never going to happen for any of them. No matter what Mick achieves in that reserve role, he won't do enough to convince anyone that the man who spent 2022 demonstrating cell reproduction with his Haas deserves a spot in the top team. That's something you more often than not earn from strong midfield performances. Or daddy's cash. Besides, three of them have their seats filled for next year anyway. The only spot available is technically hashtag blessed at Mercedes, and Ket heads and their Ferrari rumours aside, he's re-signing with the Silver Arrows for at least another season or two. Now, that would technically leave six other potential landing spots but we can cut that list down a little bit further. Although there's likely to be seats aplenty at Alpha Tauri, that will go to a Red Bull junior slave. I think they've learned their lesson after Nick DeVries. With Mick also parting ways with the Ferrari Driver Academy on his way to Mercedes, we can single out Haas as well as if that was ever going to happen anyway. McLaren and Alpine likely won't be changing their driver lineups anytime soon, leaving us then with only two realistic options. For the first of those, we return to Williams. As I said, Schumacher was linked to the Grove Base squad at the end of last year, before they teamed up with Land of the Free here. With Sargent's repeated off-roading causing problems higher up the Williams food chain, a race seat could well become available for next season. 
If that happens, I really wouldn't be surprised to see Mick's name thrown back into the equation. There is, after all, a link there with the team using Mercedes engines, so a deal could always be done. Realistically though, if you're trying to replace a crash-prone driver, is Mick Schumacher really the sensible replacement you want? No matter the feedback from the sim, his last Grand Prix outing saw Mick rear-end one of the Williams cars in the closing moments of the race. At least this time, it didn't lead to Armageddon, I guess. It would be unfair to completely rule Schumacher out here, but for me, the move just doesn't seem logical. What actually makes more sense is the German teaming up with the one team we haven't mentioned thus far, Alfa Romeo, or just Sauber as they'll be known from 2024. Of course, they won't be Sauber for very long, German manufacturer Audi taking the reins from the new regulations in 2026 and that could just be the lifeline Schumacher's looking for. Audi have already expressed interest in wanting a German driver, and who better than the son of a seven-time world champion? Well, preferably the son of a seven-time world champion who doesn't bin it in the wall as much, but maybe that's why a move now makes more sense. Picture the following scenario. You chuck Shumi in the car for next year with the promise that provided he performs, he'll be part of the Audi lineup from 2026. If he does, great. If he rips that car in half, well, there was never really an Audi attachment at this stage anyway. That might be a good plan, though there's a pretty big problem with it. Schumacher may be great at sharing a car, though current drivers Zhou Guan Yu and Valtteri Bottas might just have a thing to say about that. Zhou's contract may technically end at the conclusion of the 2023 season, though already I feel like he's done more than enough to secure more time in that seat even before we consider the rakes of cash he brings in from China. He's been confidently beating Bottas this year, the Finn having what really isn't an ideal season. And while I've explained that already in a video earlier this year, the fact remains that he's in the middle of a long-term deal, and showing him the door would require parting ways with a high volume of cash. Not an ideal scenario for a team trying to put everything into being competitive in 2026. You've also got to question whether Zhou or Schumacher have the ability to lead that team and provide the quality feedback on car development that Bottas has taken from his long stint at Mercedes. It's a bit of a catch-22 situation. Let's not forget about Theo Porcher as well. The Frenchman has been a Sauber junior since the Big Bang, and though Big Bangs seem to be all he's capable of these days, placing him behind Schumacher in the priority list would mean Alpha Bosses admitting failure, something they probably don't want to do. At the end of the day, this all paints a fairly grim picture for Mick Schumacher. He may have the famous name and have proven that on his rather rare day, he can be a fantastic driver. He may even have turned heads at Mercedes this year but I can't see it being enough to see him back on the F1 roster for next season, and maybe even beyond that. At this stage, the only way I see it happening is if we get a huge bombshell in the driver market, a bit like the Alonso to Aston move from last year. Being honest though, it's rare we see big changes like that two years running. That's only my take however, and given it's my take, expect to see Hamilton sign for the Scuderia tomorrow. Anyway, do let me know your thoughts on Mick down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you dropped it a like and got subscribed for even more in the future. I'm always up for recommendations when we haven't got a race on, which you can send me either in the comments or on my other various social media channels. A final thank you, of course, goes to all my patrons and channel members, but for now, that's all from me. So I'll be seeing you very soon for another video, but until then, have a good one.